talking to Tyler Lampley, second ward alderman, who has taken the point on the agreement between uh, the city and Wayne White Co-op. Tyler, first of all, thank you for uh, taking a few minutes to talk to me. Ah, thank you for reaching out. Happy to answer any questions you have. Well, I've had quite a few on the campaign trail. Can you give us just a brief overview of the agreement that's going to be on Tuesday night's agenda for consideration? Yeah, there's been a little bit of uh, misinformation put out there. This is a service agreement, strictly a service agreement. We are not selling our assets. What's going to happen is they are going to be the people that will handle outages whenever we need to have poles changed out. They'll be doing all that. They'll be doing what Tyler Lashbrook and his crew do right now, but it'll be under them. So sometimes we need a bigger crew and we have to contract that out. They have the bigger crew. So that is kind of what we're looking at. We don't have the equipment. We don't have the crew. They will be able to take that over and they're going to be able to do it at a better rate than what we could do if we had to hire more people or had to contract it out. Why has it been handled this way, Tyler? A lot of people are uh, somewhat suspicious of a press release on Thursday followed by a Tuesday night city council vote. What would you say to somebody that asked that? Well, I mean, it was, it's been a long time coming. I guess for us on the council, it's really not been a short window, but for the public, I guess per se, yes, it has been. Um, we've been working with Hoosier and it kind of all just finally came together after almost two years were in the making, starting with Brent McGuire, starting before this last council even got started. We've made multiple trips to Springfield and things like that. So for us, it really wasn't that quick of a turnaround because we have done the due diligence to get it out there. But I guess as far as the public per se, yes, they would see it as a little bit of a short notice. What happens to the city workers and the city, a substantial amount of city equipment that uh, helps maintain those lines? Uh, we are working on an agreement right now to get um, all or as many of our employees over to Wayne White so that they are going to start working there. All of our employees will stay with the city through December 31st, and then they'll become Wayne White employees at that time, starting with the holiday, probably January 2nd or 3rd. Um, all the equipment, the equipment is going to be sold uh, either to Wayne White or we'll auction it off. Most of it, you know, is a little bit older or whatever, but they do have a lot of use for some of our bigger trucks, our backyard diggers, things like that. How does this cash flow, Tyler, my look at city finances makes a lot of the revenue that comes from uh, our, our power sales just absolutely essential to be able to make ends meet. Yeah. Can you talk to that? Yeah. Um, I mean, my background is a, a master's in business administration with a, a very high emphasis in finance. So I have spent a lot of time crunching numbers and Wayne White CFO has crunched numbers and our numbers match up. Yes, we will be paying Wayne White a fee to manage our system. That will be a fee directly based on our power bill. Everything they will be doing will be at cost. So that means the labor, everything like that will be at cost. So we're not gonna be having the contractors. So we're gonna be saving money there. We'll also, part of the deal, which I know we're talking about later, will be the Hoosier, one, Hoosier buying the 138 KV line. That'll save us our bond payment of $750,000 a year. So we're saving some money there. Um, but we have, in effect, the first year we're looking to probably still be able to profit around $750,000 a year based on what that, um, at our current rate structure without doing any increases. Um, we have a couple different options where we could do maybe a half a percent a year thereafter for the life of this contract, or maybe wait three or four years and do a 1% here, 1% there and be able to maintain a minimum of $500,000 a year in revenue coming into the city. People are comparing uh, Wayne White rates to the current city rates, and there's some real concern about who sets the rates. Tyler, can you talk to that? 100% the rates will be maintained by the city of Fairfield. The fees that we charge for disconnect, reconnect, or being a new uh, person on our system, will be set by the city of Fairfield and they'll be following our current codes, our ordinances and everything like that. All they will be doing is whatever we tell them to do, just like our city collector and our billing office does now, they will follow what's in our code book. 
city spent millions of dollars on two auxiliary lines, one coming from the south, one coming from the east. What happens to yes. those? Um, we will be selling them to Hoosier as part of the deal. If this deal falls through with Hoosier, then this whole deal is uh, is off the table. That's the only, one of the biggest caveats to the agreement we would be signing with Wayne White is we have to finalize the deal with Hoosier, and we hope that'll be finalized by mid-May. Is there a set uh, price that, that you're going to get for those lines? Has that already been determined what, what Hoosier would have to pay? Yes, uh, when we built the 138 KV line around 10, 11 years ago, it cost us around $10 million to uh, build it. Unfortunately, uh, times got tough, Airtex leaving, things like that hurt the city, and for years and years, we only made interest-only payments. Currently, for Hoosier to buy the line out from the bond will cost them $8.6 million book value on the line and the approximate value which we had a third party figure it was 5.9 million dollars they are willing to pay off the debt hmm. but they also get the 69 kv line thrown in at no charge which for us we can't maintain it because it's in the bottoms it's in a floodplain. we have a lot of issues down there so that helps cash flow is what you're t saying. It's going to help us tremendously on cash flow. We're spending around $100,000 a year on contractors in addition to the $750,000 a year bond payment. You've been the point person, and that's another point uh, that I've heard on the campaign. So let's just be really direct about it. Uh, yeah. Gary Moore, the interim mayor, is an employee of Wayne White Co-op. So how has this been handled since the beginning, yeah. since Gary's an employee of Wayne White? Is that the reason why I'm talking to you? <laughs> that is why you're talking to me. So before this new council, which I would say was uh, the newer members to this council was me, Brett Cole, Gary Moore, and uh, Jerry Lisenby. Before we even got seated, I filled in for David Simpson. And at that time, we were even discussing uh, what are our alternatives were for this electric system because we knew it was in disarray. We started the process then. Me and Brent McGuire went to Springfield with Tyler Lashbrook, sat down with IMEA, had a meeting. Then we reached out to Wayne White. We had meetings out at Wayne White with me and Brent McGuire. Then we took them to Springfield and met with IMEA, trying to come up with different plans. I have met countless times with Wayne White. I have met over the phone with IMEA. Gary Moore was never involved. And when you did closed session meetings about this, which were legal because you were, uh, it was a provision within the Closed Meeting Act, he was yes. not a part of those meetings, yes? No, he did not, he did, or yeah, yes, he did not uh, involve himself at all. He stayed out, talked to the chief police or whoever was out in the lobby. He didn't come into the meetings. I ran the meetings. And Tuesday, he won't be sitting on the council when this is voted on. He will open the meeting. He will open the public comments. When it comes time for this to vote, part of the provision is I will be elected mayor pro tem as part of it because he cannot sign the ordinance and he cannot sign the contract with them. We're not going to get into any kind of legality there, but I'll be the one signing it all off. Well, we've blown through this very quickly. I just wanted to hit the high points. I certainly yes. appreciate your avail availability. Is there anything that yeah. I didn't uh, ask that you want to be able to say in summation about this uh, this arrangement that's going to be voted on on Tuesday night? I, I believe that covers it. It's, it's answered a lot of the questions. Uh, one other question that people asked was, what does Wayne White offer to us that the city doesn't offer as far as a, a consumer? And you will actually, as a consumer of them, have their access to their different bill options. You can get on their um, prepaid meters, things like that. That will be available to us. But city residents will not be uh, co-op members. You will be a city of Fairfield electric customer. They will be handling the billing. We will control the rates, everything like that, but you'll have access to their services. All right. I think we've pretty much covered it. Thank you very much, Tyler. I appreciate your time. Oh, you're very welcome. And if anybody has any questions, they can reach out to me anytime.
That's Tyler Lampley, Second Ward uh, Alderman. I'm Mike Dreith, and I'm running for mayor of Fairfield, and I uh, hope that you enjoyed this informational video. Thank you.